is Auroville in Tamil Nadu, India. It is here that individuals from across the globe have come together to create an international city of human unity. Resus from Spain has been researching natural dyeing techniques, in particular those using indigo, for 17 years. Tamil Nadu was always one of the main indigo farming regions in the country. Today, however, the only place in India where the indigo farming tradition still forms an integral part of daily life is near Jinji, in the Oroville bioregion. Since coming to live in India, Resus has been helping to revive the forgotten tradition of natural dyeing with indigo. He has worked closely with the local craftsmen to perfect the process of dyeing without chemical fixing agents. Kongarapatu is nearby here, 60 kilometers from here, and then uh, nobody knows why it's the only village where, uh, the, where this tradition has been kept alive. Uh, but we have the good chance to, to have Anson here, the source of uh, India. It's a strat in Kongarapatu too. There's few families, uh, mostly um, one family now is doing. This is the indigo that we're using. It's coming from the Indigofera tintoria plant. Uh, this plant has been grown in South India for hundreds of years. Nobody knows uh, how many hundreds of years. It's records from the French uh, from 1700s. It's records of being used here. Uh, before records, I don't know, but most probably yes. It's uh, in memorial. And then uh, uh, what now we're doing is to reintroduce also the famous Bengal indigo. Eh? Different plant. The, the plant of the Bengal indigo is Indigofera sufruticosa. Indigofera sufruticosa is uh, indigo plants contain indigo tin, is the blue part of the color, and indigo ruby, rubin, which is uh, the red part of uh, color, red color, which is also uh, in certain plants of indigo. And then in the case of, um, of uh, uh, Indigofera sufruticosa, the content of uh, indigo rubin is much more bigger, and then is the, the tonality of the of the of the dyeing fabrics, the dyeing threads is is different than the indigo fra uh, uh, tintoria. His research has not stopped there. Resus is presently trying to master the ancient Egyptian technology of fixing colour with alum to create a full palette of colours. In the year 2000, the behavior of alum in textile fiber was uncovered. This discovery has allowed his team to create many colors naturally and of similar quality to modern chemical dyes. For example, yellow is made with the fruit of Terminalia chibula. Red is made from Rubia cardifolia. Brown 
is Acacia arabica. And green is a combination of indigo and yellow. Purple with the resin of the lac insect. Important factors driving the implementation and diffusion of the processes and techniques of creating natural colours are to reduce chemical pollution, to promote new avenues of employment in rural areas and to protect the workers. Our pollution is not uh, chemical pollution, it's, it's, it's biological pollution, meaning a stress of food in the, in the water and then we need to give time to the water to be digested by bacteria. And then in this, in this way, water engineer designed one um, water purification system for us. Okay, first is um, here a uh, decantation uh, vessel, and then the more solids precipitate here. Here is a fermentation tank. This tank is called Imov tank. And then here is one double chamber, and it's allowed to, to the powders of the plant to digest by bacteria. Is continuing with one uh, filter system with the stones and plants, the roots of the plants, and finally one small lacun to give in time to the last bacteria to digest the plant uh, powders, the little powder that is coming. And then finally the water is going for the irrigating the garden. And as you see the, the, diverse, the diversity of the, of the plants in the garden, you can see that the water is quite healthy, it's not damaging the plants. The, you have banana, you have uh, pineapples, you have lemons, you have um, coconut tree, and then we put in them in the compost pick that we have. And uh, sometimes we analyze them, and then there's no any harmful chemical there. It's very good micro uh, nutrients for the for the soil. The natural waste from the process is composted and used in agriculture. Resus's experience with natural tincture or colors led him to work with organic cotton and after with traditional hand loom. Since the beginning of the research into natural indigo dyeing, Resus's dream was to actually manufacture the denim fabric. Today, after much training, some local weavers have begun production with organic cotton. Denim weaving practices date back to ancient times but it is very difficult to trace this exact apparition. Doing natural dyes and doing natural dyes thinking and, and, and try to make, uh, try to pick up uh, solutions for the problem of the textile uh, and question of pollution is automatically bring us to denim. Denim is the, is the color that is using in synthetic indigo. Synthetic indigo and natural indigo chemically is the same and the dyeing uh, behave in the same way and is looking in the same way. What is mean, the only problem that we have is the, uh, the price. Okay? Natural dyeing is a little bit more costly than, than chemical dyes. What is sure is that this way of weaving creates a strong fabric 
which requires minimal dyeing because only the warp is coloured. Resus has succeeded in producing eco-friendly fabric and jeans using natural indigo. What is fascinating to learn is that the dyeing uses a completely organic fermentation process in which the water is never discharged. This fermentation we started in, in 1093, this uh, 10,000 liters that we have here in fermentation. And then this is the seeds of the Cassia Tora, which is using to, to give food to the bacteria of the fermentation. Every week we put uh, 500 grams of seeds in each pot. This pot is 350 liters deep. Depend of the of the colors because in each pot we can do per day one dip of uh, six kilos, and then uh, with this uh, traditional technique, uh, and then uh, if it's light color uh, we need two dips, and then we can do 75 kilos. If it's uh, a little more dark we need to do four dips, and then it's uh, 50 kilos. And it's, uh, if it's more dark we need to do eight dips, and then it's uh, 25 kilos per day. Or, if it's much more dark, 16 dips, we can do only 12 kilos. The greatest challenge is to incorporate all this knowledge and apply it on an industrial scale, without reducing the quality or increasing costs. This will enable everyone to enjoy a natural way of being. Yeah.